the home inspection needed to be right on, because this is where we want to stay. Your home inspector should have caught that. This doesn't even meet minimum code right here. Would I want that on my house? No. I was standing on that. Would I be upset if someone did at my house? Yes. If he missed these things, I am so scared to find out what else could be wrong. Two good people, Mitzi and Corey. Buying in a nice neighborhood. This is a really nice street. The houses are not too old, seven years old. Hired a home inspector, good call. He comes in, he sees a few things, appears to miss quite a few things. I'm gonna go through this house, and if there's problems, I'm gonna fix them, and I'm gonna make them right. Just head on over to the park, okay? Okay, Mom. The reason we bought in this area is really because of the importance of family. We wanted something where we have a seven-year-old daughter. She's active. She wants to, uh, you know, be able to play and stay close to her grandparents down the street. Hey, guys, I think I'll go on the swing. OK, let's go. Yay! <laughs> well, we've been married 20 years, so we've been in numerous houses. Oh, she's going too high. We don't really have much time to, to work with things, so um, we wanted a simple house. We wanted large windows, the five bedrooms, and we needed a large enough home in order to fit our furnishings. That means so much to us. I sound like I want a lot, don't I? <laughs> I wanted a jacuzzi tub. <laughs> Corey and I have worked all of our lives, you know, to purchase a home like this. And who's the best singer in the whole wide world? Barbra Streisand. Oh, that's my girl. Oh, that's I've been a, a fan of Barbra Streisand's, and my husband's been a fan of Gene Roddenberry's for, oh, for 30 years. And never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I would be able to own something that Barbra Streisand owned. It represents to me that anything's possible. The Gene Roddenberry dining room suite was housed in Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas, Nevada. We thought about who could have been sitting at this table. William yeah, like Shatner. William Shatner, uh, Leonard Nimoy, uh, Jean-Luc Picard. Because anything's possible, right? So when we purchased this house, we really wanted a fantastic home inspection because the home inspection needed to be right on because this is where we want to stay. Hi, How are you? welcome to our home. You must be Mitzi. Hi, Mitzi. I'm Mike, nice, nice to, meet to meet you. Corey? Yes. Nice Hi, to meet you, sir. He took the time to go through, and he was taking pictures. He was checking everything. But I think he spent more time on checking appliances than actually checking the house. If we had known what we know now, and some of the things that we have found since his home inspection, um, I don't think we would have bought this property. Uh, I'm going to assume you're leaking at the corner here. That's right. That's my assumption based on what I'm yes. just first seeing. And uh, it's, it's, a really, it's a really big crack, and it seems to have gotten worse over the winter. Uh, the reason you're going to see it get worse in the winter is sim it's really simple. Water gets in there, it freezes, it pushes, it expands, and then it just it's going to keep pushing it. I walked with the inspector. Uh, he did point that out. Like, we said, OK, there's a crack here. He says, oh, yeah, just put a bit of cement, and you'll be good. Really? Yeah. But it didn't seem right to me. A little bit of cement. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you think that's going to stop it from leaking? This seems like the weight of the house on there. Well, it is the point load to your porch on the second floor and to it, the roof line exactly. in the front. That's why we have so many columns, is actually to hold all that weight load. The problem with these columns is really at the base here, because this is the footing for the column here. It's just a, a nice little trim effect. This is what's going to take the structure. But we have water coming in underneath the caulking. Very clear signs. If it can get in underneath that, it's going to get in downstairs. If you look at the crack where it is, and you go into the cold room underneath, yeah. and you can actually see the water damage you or can the see water buildup, and it would have oh. been like I don't think it's a simple repair. And no, I think I the think the home inspector should have highlighted this. Say, by the way, this is not just a simple crack on, on the surface up there, but it actually goes down into your cold room, and you're going to get water buildup or damage. I if, personally don't think it's something it. that can be fixed. That, on the floor, right there, is what? Well, that's water and moisture. Is that water and moisture? He was here in the spring. Mm -hmm. And are you telling me that wasn't there last spring? It just happens to be this year? 
but I can see that this was a total vertical two by four that was in, and they cut it off and pulled this piece out. But we can see that that piece is easily black and has a lot of water on it. In the report, the home inspector said, no sign of leaking in the basement, no sign of water in the basement, no sign of problems with your foundation under the minor structural cracks. Correct. One, two, three, four, five, six signs of moisture. And I can fix this. We'll see. I don't know if these things are fixable. I, and I know I keep saying that because it, it seems so overwhelming to us. Yeah. One thing that we first noticed was that the, the kitchen had problems where there was, uh, it looks like water damage at some point and there's, uh, we noticed mold in the, in the kitchen. We got uh, a new kitchen put in that took us uh, months. This will tell me whether or not we've had someone in here that knows what the hell they're doing. And so far, I would say they do. Yay! I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that if the home inspector had done a proper inspection, he would have seen the mold in the kitchen. I think anybody would, you know, that could see could see the mold in the kitchen. Um, anybody, if they'd run the shower, could have seen it hadn't drained. One shower, and it, we could tell that it was unusable. And then pulling off the tiles and seeing mold, uh, you, you just, it makes you sick. Why does it rattle? You know, because they didn't secure it in behind the wall. This nipple, it's called a nipple, where this, this, this piece ties into, you secure it. And this never happens. So then you pull the excussion blade forward, and you know that they didn't caulk it. Had they have caulked it, it would have helped. That means, did they caulk in behind this? Did they caulk in behind this? The answer is no, because I can see it. That's where you can leak. This is where you can leak. This is where you can leak. This is where you'll get a headache. You put water in with organic products, paper on the drywall, metal, wood studs. Mm -hmm. uh, you put water, moisture, with organic, mm -hmm. you get mold. mold. Yeah. And it's you have scary. a young kid, and you don't like mold. So that's why, when I look at this, I go, it looks good, but it won't work. And it won't last. So like one of the, uh, the, the main concerns I had was uh, this trench that the previous owners had uh, dug. Um, it, it seems to always hold water. This is actually a drainage system that the developer has done. It does tie into a drain system. The reason why you're seeing it done like this is whoever had the house, they put stone in the backyard, they've made this little, their own culvert here, and it's just not good enough. So what you're seeing is like a nice little puddle here. The water's sitting right here, it's a low spot, right? All right, I care more about your, your deck right now. What did your inspector say about this deck? He didn't say anything about the deck. I look at a deck that has two by two supports on the rail, okay? I look at the sloping stairs that tells me the stairs have actually, because I almost fell down, have sunk down into the ground. If you notice our rundown on the treads, yeah. they've sunk into the ground. So that means it's not on any type of footing, it's not on any type really? of concrete pad. Yeah. Well, that's not good. So now let's look at how strong that is. Is that nice and strong? No. We're moving the stairs right now, aren't we? You just shake it and the whole deck's loose. I mean, it's not rocket science, you know what I mean? That's something definitely that the house inspector should have caught. These things are so basic. I look at the 4 by 4s that are supporting your deck, and it just comes up underneath. There's no cradles holding this whatsoever. It's just tag nailed down into supporting this. So a building inspector is not going to pass this. Right away, I'd say the deck comes off, build a new deck. I haven't seen this. How would I know this? Well, your you know? inspector should have told you, don't you think? Yeah, of course I do. That's what I think. That's what I think. I'm starting to feel like it's a piece of junk. And how could we have been so stupid to purchase it? If I fix the crack out front and it doesn't leak again, what do you give me? Salt. <laughs> Salt. My original home inspection, it was probably uh, not worth the paper it was written on. In the report. The home inspector said, no sign of leaking in the basement. And it was just like a little stamp that said, silly, naive buyer, you go ahead and move forward. That's what the stamp should have said. You know, it's funny, I look at these houses and I think, my God, stop building for just looks. You build up all this beautiful precast and don't caulk the center points that I keep talking about. When a home inspector comes to your house, his job is to walk around, 
do a quick little document, whether he's taking pictures or writing it down. I'm hoping he's doing both. He's gonna say, I see points that water can penetrate your house. When I notice, I look, I'm gonna look right from this corner, and let's follow that corner all the way up. What do we see? The actual foundation runs down on level, and they had to build it up with broken pieces of brick to get it level, to brick over. But this is a quick fix in putting in pieces of brick, making your brick hang over, which we want. We want that reveal, and then continue and do a parge effect across, which is now breaking and falling apart, just due to the water that's getting in here and freezing the area, which is one of the main reasons I'm here. The problem with these columns, if water gets underneath them, which we saw downstairs, like why a hole here like this? I'll tell you why. That's probably where one of the two by fours are. We'll take a look at this, and see what they've done. See, that's just not a good sign. That's really bad. Okay, that's ridiculous. By the way, that's wood, okay? This is a really stupid thing to do because that's a really good point of how fast it's going to track that water and bring it down, like the wood's falling apart. We saw the evidence down the wall of all the water coming down. There's our wick. We really don't want to wick it in. We want to wick it out. How oh, lazy. This is just stupidity. This is the people that don't care because the forms are in place. All they had to do is cut the top off. I can see it in the corner here. It definitely is. It's another vertical two by four. It stinks, too. You walk in as an inspector, a home inspector, and you say, OK, why is the caulking so thick at the bottom of that pole? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to say they're covering something up. It's not a goof and the caulking, oops, you know, and you leave it, because everything's nice and neat here. Yet there's a huge goob here and a huge goob over there. That says something's being covered up. So what do you do? You just do a little bit more investigation. Common sense, remember? Go downstairs. What do I see? Oh, I see wood in the concrete. Now, is wood allowed to be in the concrete? The answer is no, it's not allowed to be in the concrete. Now I got a problem. The only thing I can think of they put gravel in is because they didn't want to cut the grass. This is going to be a, a big thing. Well, now, now, some people work a lot, right? They got so many hours, they can't cut the grass. This would be an easy fix. Put down the plastic, put down the stone. The moat, it's a little strange, but I mean, because they didn't need it. I'll pull it up, and I'll put down some soil. I mean, there's a seven-year-old girl here. She'd love a backyard. That's the least I can do. How do you miss these things, eh? How do you look at this and miss this? Is there anything here that looks right? No, why is my brick discolored? Why can I see through the joint at my window? This has been happening from day one, because that little bit of caulking on top right there does nothing. It's already completely cracked up the mortar in between the two cells. What's that gonna hold? Now, I get to pull out all that caulking and put in proper rubberized caulking, not a cheap two-year caulking. This is a two-year cheap, cheap caulking. Don't do this where it's going to cost so much money down the road from water infiltration. The signs are there. I didn't build this house. Seven years old. Wow. Man, I don't like those stairs. This door was installed wrong. What they've done is put in the door first and then poured the concrete sill around it, which has created a vulnerable area for water penetration right here. The door is supposed to sit on top of the concrete and you caulk the bottom. The way it is now, the door provides direct access for the water to get in behind the concrete and into the house. And this will be a place that I look at in the basement to see how much damage it's already caused. So this area here is the door that's upstairs. Now, I'm gonna be one of the guys that pulls the plastic down, pulls the insulation out. What do I see? That's not a good sign. Because that door has been letting water in for a while. It's black. So, once again, simple thing, knowledge. I look upstairs, I see a problem. I come downstairs, I want to see underneath it. I made a mental note, I want to see underneath the door. Take a picture, show the homeowner. That means I got to pull that door. Mr. Bennett. Hey, bud, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. This is a nice looking house. We got some furniture in here from some uh, pretty fancy people. That's some funky furniture. She's funny, because uh, Mitzi, she's like, everything I said was, no, you can't fix that. <laughs> you, you can't do this. You can't do that. I'm a Leo. You don't tell a Leo. Uh, no kidding. I know. 
I'm looking at all kinds of standard for a seven-year-old home, caulking on the outside of the windows, water infiltration big time, the shower stall upstairs that really is falling apart. They used it once. It's typical every time we come to these new ones. Home inspector didn't see it. <laughs> he was blind. Yeah, you can't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not at Leo. <laughs> Had your home inspector found what I found, would you have bought this house? No way. Actually, no bleeping way. No way. Damon, why don't you go to the back door because of the way they did the curb to the door? Yep. And, and it opens left to right. So break out about a foot on the right side. OK. And if you guys go upstairs and dismantle that wonderful shower <laughs> in, the, in the ensuite bathroom, and let me know what you find. Oh, this is an actual builder flaw, which just drives me crazy. If you look here, that is your subfloor. That's what's underneath your tiles that comes to the outside plate here. It is saturated. Oh, wow, that's really wet. Yeah. Well, the problem was that they poured this afterwards. You can right. see how this is all this is going to do is create a bathtub, right? right. The water's going to go down there, sat get in, saturate exactly what it did, because that's actually really, really Sucked. wet. Yeah. Well, now we'll do it this way. Order a whole new door. When the, before the door goes in, we're going to pour our own concrete curb. Okay. We're going to make sure that we really protect this. We'll, we'll wrap everything here. Yeah. Since we're pulling out, we'll fix it. We'll make it right. Okay. Concrete board. You can see right on here the water that has been such Good thing it's concrete board and not drywall because that would have molded like crazy. But this whole area has actually brought water in. Uh, great example. We should take a picture of that. So I have drywall all on this wall, which was a mistake because we do have surface mold on that. OK, so they did a concrete board approximately just four and a half feet up, five, almost five feet up all yep. the way around, excluding the front wall. They used drywall. And this drywall here is not even green drywall. It's your standard, oh, regular okay. drywall. So we just got the whole thing go new. OK. Here's what I'm thinking, Adam. This is such a closed off little corner closet shower. I, I just don't like the fact that there's no light getting in here. I want to get some glass in this side right here. Plus, we'll have a glass door on this side. Beautiful. It's spraying me. Hold on, hold on. That's gross. That's on your face. Yes, it is. That was disgusting. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Uh... We're just replacing the caulking because it's uh, it's an older caulking that's starting to crack. So we're gonna replace it with a quad, which is a lot uh, better stuff. It will last a while. Uh, we have to drill out the sills, too, and replace that with quad, because that's cracking also. Just at the back of the house, there's 10 windows alone. So it looks like we're, our hands are full here. Oh, <laughs> wow. These stairs are legal. They're safe. What's I find unbelievable, this is from the builder. Like, I just can't believe how unsafe this is. The whole thing, first of all, should have been on a pad at the bottom. It's sunk over the years, which is going to eventually pull nails. I mean, it's almost funny if it wasn't so dangerous.
sauna tubes. They just put them on top of the earth. Oh my God, that's a lot more dangerous than I thought it was. I can't even believe that. The builder did this? So what did they do? It's just a thin pad, look at this. Like, I just gotta see this. I, I don't understand what they did. Look at this. I don't know what they were thinking. So they poured it on, they thought this was a footing of some kind, maybe? I'll bet you that's what he did. He poured a four inch round footing. This is crazy. They poured a deck right onto grade. What's stopping that from crippling over? I mean, even the deck boards, if you look at the deck boards, look at how easily I'm peeling this up. Like everything was cut here. They're using nails that are common nails no rings on them, and they're not deep enough. They're not grabbing anything. So what was holding this deck together? A hope and a prayer, and that's what scares the hell out of me. It would have taken three people at the most to topple this. I could have done it by myself. Yeah, look how easy you push it over. <laughs> oh my God. All right, let's clean this up, but help me out. Yep. Wow, those are holding on well, eh? Uh, phone the recycled rubber company that goes around the pools because I think we can clad over top of this with a watertight membrane and use the recycled rubber and to give us a nice footing over top. So in other words, great to walk on. Yeah. I got to make it watertight. Yeah. Adam and I are going to actually start the waterproofing of the deck today, which means the railing's got to come off, which means I got to wet it down, which means I got to scrub it and prep it before we start. One, two, three. Adam, look at this. Oh my God, what's happened here? Underneath this post right here, we have another two by four or four by four piece of wood coming out that was probably part of the forming when they did the, the concrete deck here. What's happened is because of the poor caulking job, water was able to penetrate in through that hole. Winter came, froze everything. This concrete slab was probably saturated and it just popped it. It's amazing what frost can actually do to concrete. The problem now is this. This is a much bigger problem than I initially anticipated. Give me a hand, please. One, two, three. Damn. Look at that. That is just saturated wood. Watch the moisture. Look at the water, Adam. Look, look how much water is in that thing. Look at that. Now, to keep this from happening on the rest of the porch, we're going to remove all these two by four pieces of wood embedded in the concrete just to keep the water out. To rebuild this corner, what I'm gonna have to do first is install rebar to strengthen the cement and help bond it to the existing pad. We had to waterproof these holes. What we're doing is we're filling these holes with a hydraulic. It's basically a water plug. It will stop water right away. Now we're on the last stage of fully waterproofing this porch. Now we've decided to go for a rubber surface over the entire deck. You know, that will give them the extra insurance that no water will penetrate into the cold room, but it'll also be comfortable to walk on, safe for their daughter, and last a long time. Okay, so where do you want to start here? Uh, we're going to start by installing the J-mold up along there. We give a nice crisp line straight across the bottom of the... Does that act as a drip edge as well? It does, yes. After that's installed, we're going to start uh, installing the rubber mm -hmm. up all the way along. It's all hand trialed, so when it's, when it's finished, it's completely seamless. Uh, it'll be dry uh, by tomorrow morning. Durability, residentially, this will last you a lifetime. Um, we guarantee it in five-year intervals. After five years, we come back, we reseal the product and guarantee it for the customer for another five years. What we're doing here, we're augering a 12-inch sauna tube hole. We're trying to get down below the frost line. The frost line in this area sits at about three feet. We go a foot lower than that to make sure nothing heaves, nothing moves. We get down to four feet. Our goal is to get down that way, probably four and a half feet, put a little bed of gravel at the bottom for drainage, put our sonic tube in, fill it with concrete, and the next day we'll epoxy our saddle in exactly where we want it. It'll give us a solid base, a little bit different than the one they had. Well, 
today we have Trimble windows coming in and I, what we're doing here is prepping. I want to get the door out and actually pour the sill so Dom can actually install the new patio door. Now originally they installed the door first and then poured the concrete sill. Now it's the wrong way to do it and it gave rain and snow a place to get into the house. Now luckily we caught it in time and no major damage was done. All we had to do was let the wood dry, clean the small amounts of mold. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come to the top of that two by four. Okay, you good there? Yeah. All right, hold the whole thing, please. Now I'm using this two by eight as a form for our concrete sill. Once the concrete is dried, I'll remove all this wood around it, then we can install the new door. We're ready to pour, let's make a mix. A little wetter, okay, Robbie? Just a bit. Well, the one thing what you want to do is when you're building an actual curb or a silf or something, you want to make sure, especially on the outside part of the house, you want to give it a slight cant, a slight slope. Just when water hits that door and hits that concrete, you want to be able to run it off. And that way, no water hits the brick at all, no penetration into the house. That's better, Roberto! <laughs> The existing shower that was here had a rubber membrane. It only came up about eight inches. You get water above that, what do you do? What we've done is applied our half inch curdy board over the entire frame of the shower, the interior, which is gonna be watertight on its own. We patch all the screw holes in, we patch all the joints with the curdy band. We apply it down, we bring it all down into our pan. This gives you 100% watertight area. Just fitting a, a new drain for the shower. We're gonna keep the original trap and the entire setup as it was uh, uh, initially uh, installed. I provided an electric snake initially, so the line is clear, the debris has been removed. Literally, it will take me another 30 seconds to glue it all and I'll be done. That's a big area. That's not good. That's a really big area. You just heard that by walking on it? I heard it by walking on it with my feet. Right so starting right here. There. Right here. Very hollow. Solid. Right there. So it's following the crack. Look at the crack down there. Goes over here. It's wherever the cracks are, we've been undermining on the floor. What they did was they dug too far in the basement in these areas. Right. Probably threw some earth back in. They tried to tamp it down. You'll never, ever match earth's natural compaction in a basement. So what's happened is the settlement over the seven years, the ground has dropped due to digging too far with the excavation. The issue is... The furnace. The furnace. Hollow. So it does go under the furnace. Yeah. <laughs> Now we're solid here. If the furnace ever drops even an inch, it's gonna take a huge pull on the gas line. Yeah. If it drops two inches, it'll snap the gas line, let right. off the gases in the house, and then we have another issue on our hands. Which we don't want. And I don't think we gotta pull the floor. If it's, not, if it's only an inch or two, then we'll do some sort of injection, right. whether it's okay. something very liquid that will take that, that, uh, that void up to and then pick up the floor. Right, right. Uh, we know what we have to do. Yep. We have to make it right. And we can fix this. Oh, you can't fix this. <laughs> I was walking on this with my bare feet. Were you tap dancing? No, or actually, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm a bit of a heavy guy. You can't tap dance. Are you kidding me? You've seen me dance. I can't tap dance. I can't <laughs> boogie. I can't waltz. Get up. <laughs> You're down. I'm down. So now let's look at how strong that is. Is that nice and strong? No. We're moving the stairs right now, aren't we? That's something definitely that the house inspector should have caught. These things are so basic. Oh no, look at the sauna tubes. That's a lot more dangerous than I thought it was. Well see, the problem with the old deck was that there was no proper footing. So what we're doing here is making it better. Build the deck strong enough to be able to support whoever. You can't guess who's going to be out here and what they're going to be doing out here after we leave. You have to be able to build this deck to code, above code, make it strong enough that they can enjoy this deck for years to come. 
Okay, there's a good candidate for my first plate. When you're tying into a house, we put bolts right through into structure. What does that do? It leaves an opening into your house. Now, a lot of times, guys won't silicone the holes. That allows water to hit that wall coming right into those holes. These spacers allow for that bolt to still go through. We're still gonna use silicone, but it leaves the plate off the wall. You don't get the water sitting. You don't get the snow sitting right against the brick. These spacers just allow water drainage. It's as simple as that. Okay, let's tighten them up on the inside, guys. Yeah. What we're trying to do is just give the deck a slight cant, too. The worst thing I would ever want to do is bring the water back into the house. Just allow water to run off. We're gonna bring our deck six feet off of the house because in this city, the zoning bylaw doesn't allow us to go a little bit bigger, but we've made it wide enough at 14 feet that they can still enjoy this deck back here. That's actually a perfect level right there, we're good. Well, the biggest part's done. Now it's gravy, now we can start infilling. We're gonna get our beam set up, our posts in, then we can start infilling. Tomorrow, MJ and Sherry have a big job ahead of them by actually finishing the rest of it. Now we have the most important, what I call the key ingredient to any product, the installation. I mean, you can have the best performing product, but if it's not installed properly, you bought a useless product. This is where we square it up, we shim it in the right location, we foam insulate it, and this is all vinyl, which is maintenance free. You never have to paint it yet. Great performing door for a good 30 years plus. Okay, that's level right there. All right, so basically we're putting lumber lock down, then we're slipping the four by four in. That way it ties in nice and tight once we screw it. The screws are just to tack it. We're actually gonna put some carriage bolts through after to really tie it in. You can grab them and shake them all you want, and they're not going anywhere. So they can have as many people up here having a party and banging into the railings, and they're not going anywhere. Not only was this backyard graded poorly, causing water to pool along the back, but all the gravel made it useless for the homeowners. Now, Mike really wants to give this family a functional backyard, so we're gonna get rid of all the gravel, grade it properly, and lay down some grass. There's my strongest guy, MJ's out, man. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. What we've done is uh, all the subgrade we've leveled out, and all the water can flow through the property as opposed to sitting. We've taken some of the plants that were out along the fence line uh, and actually just moved them up against the deck area just to soften it up a little bit. I think the homeowners are gonna love it. It, it was a gravel pit back here, you know? The sun beating down the gravel, and you couldn't be back here. Now you got a nice lawn, it's gonna drain well. They can sit back here, enjoy the sun all around. It's a good thing. There's surface cracks all over the place. And when you're walking over the floor and that, you can hear a big hollow void. So we're going to come in and drill holes through the concrete. And we're going to pump a high density polyurethane foam underneath the floor and we're gonna fill the voids and restabilize the soil underneath. Typically when we inject through a hole, usually two to three feet, four feet away, the material will come out the hole and that tells us that that area is full. Basically it's restabilizing as uh, we've got approximately 1500 PSI of air going down through here, which in turn allows our material to follow the air and it, it shoots straight down and then it starts to spread and it expands. It's like a, a, a foam pad underneath the concrete somewhat of a bonus of it, it could also be insulating as we're going along as well. This floor here is like 68 degrees, and over here, right beside where we injected, it's jumping from 75 to 76, 77, and we injected there half an hour ago. So it's heating up a fairly substantial amount where we have injected. So we're going along, restabilizing along the wall here, and we're gonna to head towards the middle. We 
started our shower with our waterproof membrane, our curdy board, followed by the curdy band, which, which will make it 100% watertight. Now we're not relying on the grill, we're not relying on the tile, like most traditional showers. So we're beyond that now, we will not have a problem here in the future. This is a marble tile. There are differences with different materials. Um, this stuff here cuts like butter. The marble, it's very soft. How's it going? Any issues? No, we're getting up there. It's a really nice light shower. With this window here, with the, the glass here, glass there, the white tile, it really lets a lot of light in. Remember how dark it was in here and dank and smelly and stinky? It'll be a really nice little shower. They'll love it. Nice job. things for us left to do, finishing up the deck. These guys have done a great job on that. We have a little bit of caulking left to do. We have suburban glass coming to bring the glass for the shower door upstairs. It's a beautiful day to bring them home. Feel that. We did have some hollow spots, especially by the furnace, but this area, there's like one inch of concrete somewhere, some places. That's not acceptable. No, so what they did is they got under it and they filled it with their foam, the polyurethane foam, and they've strengthened this whole thing. I can feel it just stepping here. Yeah. Oh, they did out here too? Yeah, they went right into the cooling. Because remember, it felt hollow in here too, but again, thin concrete. And it's raining like crazy and I don't see any water down there. There's none. Oh, yeah, that was making me nervous. That porch looks incredible. It does, eh? It really matches the house. Do you like the color? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Hey, good job. Thanks a lot, man. I think the homeowners are going to love this. Here we go. Come on in. <gasps> OK. Oh, you go. my god. That is beautiful. Wow. What I'm most looking forward to is feeling comfortable and confident that the home that I am in is safe and that um, I'm able to stay here for a very long time. What a beautiful day. Now, I don't know about this. What have you seen? Damon came in one morning when I was sleeping. <laughs> that was, that's oh. not what Damon saw. What have you seen? Oh, oh, oh. That's cute. Sorry. I like you, you know that. MJ did too. MJ? Yeah, he's was like, and Grace was like, there's a man in the room. We okay, did not do like, it on purpose. I no, I know, it. it's really cute. How do you like your front porch? Wow. This is really amazing. Wow. I never I thought you this. could it do this. It looks perfect. It does, doesn't it? It does. When Damon actually went to uh, play with this corner, he took the rail off and it fell right off. Why would that happen, Damon? Do you remember that crack yeah, that was the there? Yeah, the crack was pretty bad. So what happened, that wood was stuck in there and it just absorbed all the moisture, freeze thaw, expanded the concrete, it snapped. So right. the only thing that was holding that corner on was your railing, actually. Really? So we made a new piece, rebarred it. So now that all that's joined and making sure the whole key was to make sure it was watertight at the bottom of the columns, then we brought in a specialty guy using rubber products. And we love this because a lot of his products is recycled. We chose the one that was gonna complement your house. This Absolutely. is really, really strong. It's durable. really durable. Mm -hmm. You're gonna love being on this in bare feet. It's oh, yeah. really, really comfortable. Think of a cushion slipper. Oh, yeah. You feel it. That's yeah. It feels really nice. Yeah. It's perfection. It is perfection. And your daughter won't get hurt on here either. And she, she won't get hurt. Yeah. And our dog won't get hurt. I love it, Mike. OK, we're leaving. That was good. I'm done. Come here. No. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> wow, I'm actually blown away. I'm amazed that uh, they are able to turn around that front uh, porch. And uh, not only did they fix it, but they actually went beyond that. And, and they've actually uh, accentuated our house. And it, it looks beautiful. It, not only does it look beautiful, but I can see us really using it. It's, it's really cool feel and safe. innovative. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous. OK, now I want you to look down. Yeah. What do you see on the floor? There's a lot of holes in the floor, isn't there? Oh, yeah, there is. Look There's at that. probably about 100 holes in the floor. Maybe we brought in a company that is so good. Because you remember I walked around with a hammer? Yeah. But 100 holes were drilled to determine how much of a distance, what's the thickness of the floor, so how much of a distance of the void from that's fallen from underneath the concrete floor. OK. They used that. Right there. Look how hard that Are is. Are you kidding me? Nope. Feel how hard that is. Wow. What? And instead of mud jacking, no, much... No, what are you, what are you saying, saying? That you put this in the floor? Underneath the concrete. So here's what Get they do. Out of 100 out. holes, they'll stick the wand down, they'll just blow it into that hole, and it'll just fill all the voids underneath and ooze up the other hole. Then they know they can move on. 
So, Mike, the whole thing is just totally solid? 100% solid. Not only is it solid, oh, Mike, that's now crazy. it's thermal broken. Now there's insulation underneath your concrete. Oh, you've done too much. So Mike. now your floor will be warm. That's amazing. I've never heard of that. So this goes right into your, your cold room. And ever since it's been raining like crazy, you remember, yeah. Yeah. no waters in your cold room. Aww. That's right. That's amazing. <laughs> you want to see your shower upstairs? Yeah. Here we go. Come on in. <gasps> okay. Oh, my God. That's beautiful. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Take a look. That is beautiful. Well, it's not it's beyond, like, anything we could ever dream of. Like. Oh, that's a simple shower. No, but it's what's, not. It's that's, it this is. is for somebody very, very, very special. Thank you so, so much. We make sure that 100% mold-free oh. products in there, 100% so watertight. Of course, I thought it was beautiful. But what I really liked about it is it felt solid. Is it solid? Yeah, of course it's solid. Yeah, the other one's weak. Wow. <laughs> Thank you yeah, so much. Nice. I'm not one to just say, oh, look at the beautiful stone or look at the beautiful this. I'm one to say, let's make sure that it is solid and it's done right. I, I can't wait to have a shower in there. <laughs> Who wants to join me? <laughs> it's beautiful. I mean, we couldn't ask for anything more. Yeah, one before. more thing to show you. One more thing. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, come on. Just one. Wow. 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 That's a cold deck. Oh, my gosh, Mike. My <laughs> son, my daughter, this is really their first deck guided oh, by, guided by it. Damon, and uh, I'm rather proud of them. I think that the deck is uh, one of the nicest decks I've ever seen. I really love the, the design in the black, the posts. It's so solid. I just think that they did a really great job. We had to pull the door, uh -huh. pour, a, a pour in place. Oh, my kid did too much. And a new door. So we don't just get any door. We bring in Dominic, who is the best of the best. We actually love this guy. And look at the caulking nice. all over the windows. Nice <gasps> and neat, eh? Thank you for noticing, because that look is a big, that. big job, you guys. To caulk all your windows and all your doors and everything, you have to remove it all. So just yeah. get up on ladders, everything else, remove all that caulking, clean it up, mm -hmm. and then apply a new rubberized caulking that's going to last at least five years. So now we're going to turn this way, and we're just going to lean over your rail, your nice, tall, sturdy rail. Wow. And we're going to look down. Ah, oh, we have trees. <laughs> They're so pretty. Where did those trees come from? Yeah, they were lined up against the fence. That's right. Get out. Yes. The beautiful gravel yeah. backyard is no more. It's no more. It's nice and neat gorgeous. look. Yes. Nice it little. It doesn't even look like the same house. I can't believe how you guys turned this place around. It's just amazing. It's beautiful, Mike. I'm glad you like it. Are Mike, you happy? it's gorgeous. I am really happy. Come well, here. <laughs> 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 oh, that is too cute. <laughs> Come here. Ready? Oh, there you go. <laughs> now that I know that anything is possible for, for Mike Holmes and their crew, and uh, I, I really, really respect that. Oh my God, there's grass here. There's grass there. <laughs> Two words to say. What's that? Awesome. <laughs> I think Mike is cute. He's got a good body. But I would never give up this guy for the world. <laughs> you never. When I get my own house, I want you to work at it. Deal. Deal. <laughs> you had to buy the house without an inspection. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. And this is one big job. We were reassured that everything in this house was completed and it was up to code. This is all wrong. Everything, the basement's wrong, everything, the person touching this house is wrong. It's just disgusting. Eamon and Banafsha were engaged a couple of years, lived with her parents to save money to buy their first home. They got married, and that's exactly what they did. However, they didn't get a home inspection. Was that smart? Well, let me tell you, after living in the house for two weeks, things started to fall apart, and they started to notice things were wrong. I'm going to ask some questions, get some answers, and I'm going to make it right. We were looking for a place closer to the downtown core of the city. We were actually looking at purchasing a condo. 
However, we were both thinking about our future and possibly having kids, so we needed something with a little bit more space, so we decided to look a little bit outside of the city. Um, and that's when we decided to go for a smaller bungalow, which was a similar concept as a condo, but we also had our own backyard and we had more space. And uh, when we found this place, we liked the fact that the whole home was renovated, everything was brand new. The basement was, um, most of it was finished. So it had a lot of stuff that we were looking for. At the time that we were buying this home, there were many other people wanting to get it also. So we ended up going with the selling agent. So it was one agent between the seller and the buyer. What we were told when we were putting in an offer on this house is if we had put any specific conditions besides financing, uh, that we wouldn't be able to get this house. So she basically told us not to put in uh, getting an inspection or anything else done on this house before we took it over. Once you want something, you kind of put everything else aside and you think, you know what, it'll be okay. So we took her advice. She said, you know, we were reassured that everything in this house was completed and it was up to code. Eamon. Yes. I'm Mike. Nice, nice to meet you. I'm Nice to meet you, Mike. Nice to meet you. The people that renovated the home, this is what they do as a business. They flip homes. And uh, she's. this is not the first home that she sold for them. So she reassured us that we've never had problems. The home has been fully renovated. Everything is up to date. We, we believed her, so. I was told that uh, you had to buy the house without an inspection. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, that was a con that they, was a, That was their condition? Their condition, right. yeah. Don't you kind of find that funny? At the time? At the time, no, we, we didn't, because we just excited. wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I come in. That's where I'm nervous. Did they pull out electrical permit, plumbing permit, structural permit, yeah. totally renovated. Exactly. I love that saying. <laughs> yeah. What we're going to do is just do a quick scan. I want you to look up at your roof. We've had we've been snowing now for the last day, couple hours, right? Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor's roof. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. Let's I didn't turn know. around, look at the across the street. What we're looking for in the winter, especially when it's snowing, is snow on the roof. Right. And if you don't have snow on your roof, what does that tell you? Heat loss. And lots of it. Now I hear you have a leak. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to have to go see that. So okay. why don't we go inside and you can tell me all about it. When we got our first rainfall, we actually had water coming down from our pod lights and it actually seemed like somebody had turned on a tap upstairs in the attic. I hear you did something. Yes, did I did. Did you fix it? Me and my father-in-law, we actually went up onto the roof and uh, I actually went up into the attic and put a bowl right where the water was dripping to kind of collect some of that water. Until you fixed it, okay. See these two tracks? They're electrical tracks. Okay, that appears to be coming from the bathroom. This is not how we do electrical a cord like this, which is an extension cord. You don't run it through the wall. You don't run it up through a track in behind the metal that's tight against the wall and then tying it into powering up the uh, fan that doesn't exhaust anything anywhere. So that tells me whoever did it is just a handyman. So in the first month, we had all of our plugs and the rewiring was done horribly where he was getting shocked. Um, our furnace broke down and then we realized some of the outlets weren't working at all. Okay, that doesn't work. We actually contacted the previous owners. And we gave them a whole list and said, you know, you need to come in and fix all this stuff. One of the things that we found out with the person that they actually sent over was, I asked him, are you licensed to do all this stuff? He said, no, I'm just their handyman. I do all everything all around the house. I, I had him leave pretty quickly. I said, you know what, just leave it alone. It's okay, I'll get somebody else to come in and fix this. Okay, so I'll take a quick look at what we've done here since this is all bragged about a brand new basement. Okay, so. <laughs> That's our rough in washroom. Okay, <laughs> now, this is for the sink, this is for the toilet. So they built up a pedestal for the toilet, and by the way, that pedestal is not going to work. Let's go to overhang it. This is a standard short bowl toilet. Now, one, it's changed the height that you're gonna sit on, which you really shouldn't do. You bro broke open the floor. Shouldn't you set the right height for the toilet? And how are you gonna make the toilet fit? Ruffin bathroom, awesome. Totally awesome. Ruffin shower, don't use it. What's gonna stop water from getting on that drywall once you tile that wall? Nothing. 
the grout will actually absorb moisture. Moisture travels from wet to dry. So it gets wet, it tries to move its way out, will get into the drywall, work its way up the drywall and do what? Turn into mold. It sure will. If you're gonna tile, you should use a concrete backer board of some sort, mm -hmm. something that's gonna last forever. Totally wrong, it's gotta come down. Totally wrong. So let's take a look at your kitchen. Is the idea that you can rent this out, so, right, you can yeah. save money. Well, there's rules when it comes to a basement. There must be a fire stop in between this floor and that floor, and we need a window you can get your body out of. And your windows are too small for that size. This is not a legal basement apartment. Let's see the furnace room. Just watch your head. Where is that from? Is that, is that a vent? Oh my God. <laughs> this is the kitchen drain. The rough in kitchen. There's no air behind water. That drain wraps around to the back wall, goes in behind the furnace, continues out, and ties right in under the sink. Everything about this plumbing right here is 100% against code. Here we have a down run. Okay, there's the drain from the kitchen. Absolute no-no. Here's air behind water. Look how they did this. So there's their join from ABS to lead. What's the join? Thousand of one uses for duct tape. If they did this, what else did they do? So that leads me into all kinds of other concerns here. You've got problems. Uh, this tile, I'm pretty damn sure has asbestos. This it's the tile. size of the tile, it's a nine by nine tile. And if anybody's messed with this, they put the spores in the air and you don't want to breathe in asbestos. Why? It'll make you sick. It can kill you. Mold is nothing compared to asbestos. Now I'm gonna start looking for anything else because based on the year, you have it. There it is right there. Oh, you I see can that see board? It. Oh. That's a fire protection board above the ductwork. Yeah. That fire protection board is asbestos. Oh. If we knew then what we know now, um, initially we probably wouldn't have purchased this home. Uh, we probably would have been still searching and gotten something that we were comfortable with. I don't know about you, are you nervous? I'm very nervous. Yes. I'm nervous. <laughs> I already have a really bad feeling. Do you know how much it's gonna cost to fix this house? This is a little house. All wrong. Visual things that stand out, home inspectors will see. If Eamon and Benafsha had got a home inspector, they wouldn't have bought this house, period. Now, I talked to uh, both the homeowners and I said to them about this tree, it's just one thing, you're gonna wanna move this tree. I mean, the tree is gonna grow into about a 40 foot tall pine tree. It's beautiful, it's great when it's small, but don't plant trees near the house. So I asked them if you like the tree, put it out in the middle of your grass. You see our soffit runs on an angle. We do have a perforated section here and here. That's two sections allowing that air movement to get in. I'm pretty sure there's no wood up there, much like we see next door, which is a wood soffit with three locations of air getting in. Based on the age of the house, that's how they used to be. And then someone comes in and puts up a metal soffit to make it look better and keep the critters out. But well, I only have two locations that are gonna give me air and that may not be enough. So as far as I'm concerned, that's one issue. You can see the icicles we have. It's been snowing all day and we still have no snow on the roof. <laughs> Obviously, we do have heat loss in the house. You saw the pot lights on the inside. I can just imagine how much heat's coming into that attic just from the pot lights. Never mind, possibly not enough insulation. So since there's no snow on the roof, that amount of heat is melting that snow. By the time it gets to the edge, it's what we call an ice dam. And it's already forming. We had the icicles. Is it an issue? Yes, the weight of that ice alone, never mind is it, is, is it not controlling water anymore, but the weight of the ice alone will pull off the east trough right off the side of the house, not to mention icicles coming down on your head. Just wanna take a quick look since I have my ladder, see what they did to the roof. So ice is about a foot up. So here's how they fixed the roof. They went up with a caulking gun and they caulked almost every single rain line on this side of the house. All the shingles are starting to cup. Uh, the roof does need to be done. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of my tools, and we'll go inside. The magic tool that every home inspector needs. Wow, see what I'm seeing? 
I'm gonna put my money on it. That's metal studded wall on an exterior wall. And the reason I'm seeing it so good because it's a metal, and that metal's in behind the drywall, and the cool's in behind the drywall, and the cool's cooling the stud and showing it right through the drywall. Another reason I say don't use metal studs on the exterior wall. Use them on an interior wall if you want. So this is the area. Where's my ladder? Now, minimum code is minimum code, right? You know I don't like minimum code. So what don't I see? Vapor barrier. I do see insulation, which is good. How thick is that insulation? It's not an R12. It's a very thin insulation, as a matter of fact. And I'm correct, it's a metal stud. It's not minimum code, which is really a sucky thing. I made a little bit of a mess here. Nothing I can't fix. I already know I'm gutting the basement. OK. Cold spot. Right there. Oh, it's like they moved that insulation out to get around that pot light. I got this structure thing in my head. Open concept. We know for sure that there was a wall here. That's for sure. Somebody's opened this just to give that illusion. But as you follow this line across, what it does is it doesn't carry over the wall. If this beam is carrying load, it needs to be supported by structure beneath it. Without it, the center of this house will sag, creating cracks and eventually real problems. Now, I really can't tell until I go in the attic, because if there's trusses up there, it's just an attic. It's not a second floor. But if there's trusses, roof trusses, then the weight's displaced to the outside of the house. I don't have to worry about the inside wall. But in an older home, normally it's handmade rafters with collar ties and ceiling joists. So then we'd have a beam in the basement, which, you know, I started thinking back. I was in the basement. I didn't see much of a beam. Is it enclosed in that wall? Is it right here where this wall is? They've opened all this up. You get where I'm going with this? Is there a structural problem? I'll be checking. Oh, that's a joke. That's ridiculous. Jeez. Places I get to go. A home inspector wouldn't want to come into this one. There's nowhere near enough insulation in this attic. It's warm up here. It's sub-zero outside, and it's actually warm. Insulation's moved everywhere. You can see it. Wherever there's a pot light, look at it. No wonder my camera picked it up that it was cold all around the pot lights. There's no real water issues, and I'm surprised because that shingle's in really bad shape. So more than likely, it was coming through some bad areas. There's no real signs of it, but it's not molding, and that's a good sign. However, everything else is wrong. We do have a junction in the ceiling that really should have a uh, receptacle cover on it. And I'll tell you another thing, there is no ground in this wire, so none of the pot lights are grounded. OK. Never mind the insulation's moved and we're leaking through not enough insulation. This is paper. Very dry, very brittle. If I took my lighter out right now and I lit that up, it would just go poof. So when you put that in an area where we have electrical issues, such as this open junction box with no ground whatsoever, what do you expect, man? You know, no wonder we have electrical fires in the attic. No wonder there's no snow on this roof. Now, remember I talked about open concept downstairs. It was all in the real estate papers. Well, they opened up walls. Now, if you look at these rafters, these are what we call ceiling joists. We are sistered at this point with approximately a four inch overlap. And as we continue, because there's not enough insulation, I can see every single one of them. That tells me I need a structure load downstairs. Obviously, I don't have that. That means we have a structural issue on top of the rest of this. It's just disgusting. You know, who comes up here, does this kind of work? This is people that don't care. They just throw this out of the way, slap this in. Who cares about the electrical wire? Quick, boom, get down there, plaster it. This is all wrong. Everything, the basement's wrong. Everything, the person touching this house is wrong. Nobody seemed to care about it, because if they cared about it, this insulation would not be like this. They would not ever play with paper against electrical or dare mess with electrical in this way without getting a permit. Do you know how much it's going to cost to fix this house? This is a little house, a little house. All right, I'm not in a good mood. In the real estate, there was no inspector. Yeah. So in the real estate papers, it was like, bro, oh, totally renovated, new electrical, new plumbing, new, new, new. Yeah. And I'm not kidding. I'm not even exaggerating. 
It's not. It's a total flip. So let's get ready. This is going to be a lot of work. Brian. Hey, Mike. I uh, want to say thank you so much for coming so fast. Now, all I've seen is the vinyl tile and the board over top of the furnace. I haven't seen anything else, but I'm curious what you have found. The only asbestos we see is the transite board above the furnace and the VAT, vinyl asbestos tile. There's no asbestos in the plaster or any of the stuccos uh, in this house. So this can all be done uh, type one removal. We're going to do it a modified type one. When so, you say modified, what do you mean? Um, type one means that a uh, guy can wear a suit and a half face respirator and do this removal with a drop sheet. So there's no major concern of, uh, of I guess, spores or fibers in the air. Exactly. Right. Because unless this what? type of asbestos can't become airborne unless you drill or saw it. So turn it into powder? That's correct. It makes it airborne. That's when it can hurt you. Okay. So what I want to do today, and you got to give me the okay on that, is that literally the homeowners don't know yet, but got the basement. Yes. So I can go ahead and do that as long as I don't disturb the tile and or board. That's correct. Okay, we're gonna be doing a lot of work today, so let's try and keep the floors clean. We're gonna start in the basement and work our way up. Oh, you wanna start with that? We'll uh, use those for, oh, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute, that sucks. This is also asbestos, and I'm not surprised. Oh, uh, yay. I'm just not surprised. So we can't touch it, let's not uh, disturb this at all. The floor, we can still go ahead with the walls and seal it. Yeah, okay. as long as we don't disturb this, we're fine. And see, this is a great example, eh? When they put the tackless in, yeah. all they're doing is, is throwing those fibers through the air. Well, look what they did here. They actually chiseled these up, probably to do something with the kitchen here they for did. tiles. Yeah. And they actually chiseled these up. They did. So we can let the contractor know who did this wonderful renovation we're about to fix. Go to a doctor. Uh, he should, Yeah. actually. Don't be afraid to get dirty, guys. Start anywhere you want. It's a big basement. We're actually going to gut this basement. It has been studded with metal studs on the exterior wall, which you know I hate. I don't like minimum coat, but there's not even a vapor barrier. So we got to take it down. The electrical's got to be exposed. OK, look at that. And let's just see if that's live. Oh, of course that's live. Yeah, just leave a wire up there. Put a hole. Somebody will stick their finger up there. I just get a shock. We're going to find a lot of electrical problems, let me tell you now. No doubt in my mind. You don't want to punch a floor joist. That's not good. <laughs> I, was, I was a floor joist. <laughs> I love my job. There's a tool. A hidden junction point. So he's running a line. This yeah. line goes outside, and outside right here, there's probably a receptacle. No conduit right through the concrete? No, no conduit, no nothing. I mean, that's again. But there's one. Yeah. How, how many will I find in here? Frank's gonna love this. He's gonna love this. Mark 10. Hey, Mike. So what do you think of this one? Summarize it in one single word. Uh, sure. Creative. 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 Actually, I like that word. Um, that's, uh, there's a lot of stuff here from a plumbing aspect that I, I, I would not be able to come up with. Uh, kitchen line that goes around, and it connects directly into the laundry sink. Uh, not vented, does not have a trap. I checked this, and this is not even, this is not even a drain. Like, it's just literally an opening. You, you cannot even inspect that. I ran a video camera here. The roughing for the bathroom is totally wrong. The camera can only go so far because the, the connections and underground uh, Are plumbing. Are you seeing a lot of this? Honestly, yeah. It's a total mess. Done totally uh, incorrectly uh, by amateur. Totally against code. Pretty much, I'm looking at completely new plumbing in a basement here. To be honest, I'm happy about it because there's so much wrong that's been done here. From the plumbing aspect, I'm going to take care of it all. 
and I'm uh, I'm gonna do it right. I'm glad you're part of the team. And you know what? I like that saying. You should you know, like maybe <laughs> trademark that. Half an hour, guys. But safely. I think we still kind of blame ourselves for not doing the home inspection right at the beginning. We would have seen all these problems and we would have backed mm -hmm. out of this deal. Bad news is, once I move you out, you're gonna be gone for about three weeks. I have too much to do, and it's the only way to fix this. It's a lot yeah, to take in. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think we were walking down into our basement, to be honest with you. It's a big mess. Okay, we really gotta jump on this, guys. We have a lot happening today. We have a remediation for all the asbestos tiles and the stuff in the ceiling. So Brian is coming, but first of all, we have Gary coming. He wants to disconnect the furnace for obvious reasons. The asbestos runs below and above that furnace. So we are here to accommodate Gary. So let's get our tools. Let's start disconnecting the water tank, helping Gary get the furnace out, and then we're going to get out of the way for the remediation. When I was up on the roof, I looked at this side of the roof, and uh, what they had done is because they had a leak. Now, if they went up on the roof, and he's just caulked all the rain lines, and you can tell on this side of the house, and we know it's the south side, that it's, it's cupping. So this side is going. It's really just the south side that's showing um, earlier signs of wear. Now we have the shingles off, basically we have a, a good idea of what we're into in terms of uh, repairing the side of the roof. The boards are in good shape. A um, Couple of spots of uh, leakage, we got some wet wood, but it's not by any means rotten. And then of course with the new installation, we'll ice, ice and water shield with a metal drip edge on our perimeter three feet, uh, synthetic roofing paper that's gonna cover the balance of the roof. Then we install the new shingles. Reason we take out the basement floor is for one specific reason. We're gonna redo the plumbing. If we're gonna do all that work down there, we have to do everything properly. That means from the concrete straight up. The existing floor dipped about two and a half inches into the center drain. I'm not gonna build walls on that. I cannot build walls on that. We cannot rely on something that's been done 50 years ago. That's why we rip everything out right from the get-go and do it properly. So guys, in order to expose this one beam, just to make sure that this is structurally proper, we have to take down this ceiling and this ceiling. And at the same time, because they ran pot lights into this ceiling as well, we're gonna take down this one as well. How do I fix the beam with crown molding all around? That's plaster. It's impossible to repair a plaster crown molding. Let's rip it down, we'll go new. Let's start fresh, level our ceilings, get new drywall, pot lights. We'll go crisp right from the beginning. Oh my God, you guys. You see what they did here? It's really bad. Well, it looks like we're into some structure. So what is this? This is a two by four double top plate, which would have been for the existing wall. So they kept that in, put two by fours up on their edge on that span, thinking that would take it. That works for a doorway. It does not work for a big opening like this. We need at least a two by eight. They're floating over the wall. They're actually floating this structure over top of this wall. Oh my God. I need to see this connection right here. I already know this is wrong. In another six months to a year, this would have all started cracking. And you can see that there's no structure even supported here. What they did is they tied in outside of your structure. This is my point load. This is what needs to carry down into the basement to pick up the weight above us. 
To repair this is actually quite big. I want to get one solid beam from structure to structure on either side to make this opening proper. Without knowing structure, how do you go about changing it? And obviously, they didn't know about structure. This small house, this sure is a big pile of... Hey, Joe, you want to pass up the fish tape? Got it? So we're going to end up fishing the lines downstairs so we can uh, refeed the house. We're using the uh, stack here to give us a nice chase straight down. OK, so this is pretty typical of, uh, of an older home built in the 50s where you've got old, ungrounded lines throughout the home. What ends up happening, people come in, and they decide to add a couple circuits here and there, and they're not adding them right. They're leaving junction boxes wide open. They're adding pot lights. Wiring is uh, nowhere near what it should be, so rewiring the home is always the best bet. This case here, we've got a very, very big advantage. Our ceiling is not here, so nice and easy to run our lines. Here it comes, Dave! OK, good. Clearly, we've got ungrounded lines that are in this box, and uh, someone decided to add the pot lights, as we see. So again, the lipstick and mascara make the house look pretty. They clearly just simply took the line from this two-gang box, pulled the plate off so you can see my hand coming through here. And then from here, if you follow the wire, they got brand new cable that goes into a brand new switch that would simply turn on and turn off the pot lights. No, not grounded, which most insurance companies won't even insure. Total stupidity, but it looked good. So at this point here, how much time would it take to try to correct this? Start from the beginning and just rewire. So the plumbers have started. I want them to continue today. OK, but in order for us to do our jobs today, too, we got to get this all in the basement. It's a crappy job, but we got to get it in today. It's helping to support the pipes and obviously to get our concrete in at a future date, OK? I'm very happy that actually all this has been removed, the basement's been guided, because I can actually start from scratch. Um, I'm doing all the water lines, I'm doing all the drains, I'm doing literally everything brand new. So not only are we improving the inside of the house, but we're also improving the outside, just to make sure that the homeowner doesn't run into any problems. This is where the main sanitary line actually exits and uh, connects with the municipality. So while I'm at it and have all the basement exposed, I notice that I have a half-inch copper line coming into the house. Uh, Half-inch is no longer uh, code. I'm going to install a new three-quarter-inch uh, copper water service. Again, that will not only bring uh, the water line up to code, but it will also improve the pressure and the water flow in the house. So guys, we have a really big day. This is the day we've sort of been waiting for. We got our framing up. We have the trifecta of trades coming today, running all the wires, getting the rest of the plumbing done for the laundry room, for the bathroom. Gary putting the furnace in today. So what do we have to do? Bulkheads, drywall today. Let's keep out of the trades way. Busy day down here. We'll be upstairs, OK? I think the most important part of a job of this size is planning, and then once planning is, is accomplished and, and things are laid out properly, uh, the rest of the project will run smoothly. It's just a matter of being able to work together in one room, um, give each other some space and, uh, and, and, uh, and work as a one friendly, happy family. Right, Gary? If we get rid of the plumber and the electrician, we'll be all right. <laughs> it's always HVAC. HVAC is always more important. You can always go to the bathroom outside. <laughs> We 
we got all the plumbing on this side of the house, we got all the HVAC on, the, on this side of the house, so it takes a lot of working together, figuring stuff out. We're trying not to build any bulkheads anywhere, we want to try to keep everything open. I got the biggest stuff here. My pipes are the biggest. <laughs> so it's, it's a matter of figuring out where, where they got to go and working together with the plumber. It's gonna be like a brand new house. These guys won the lottery. They're gonna save on hydro, save on gas. Uh, they're gonna be warm. They're gonna have air circulation throughout the house. It's gonna look good. They'll definitely be happy. Okay, guys, we're ready for this. First order of business. Let's get a measurement for our first beam. I wanna make the beams right here, okay? We've had to do a lot of work to get to this point. Right now, we have a temporary wall up. Above us, we have ceiling joists that scissored across both the beams. Now, when we decided to move the wall this way, which was a fantastic idea that Mike had, this means we had to extend the old joists out. So we had to replace the old joists with new joists, extending them further out over top of the new structured beam. There she goes, boys, nice. So guys, get it flush, get it level, attach it, get your clips on immediately, okay? That's our first beam, boys, very nice. Is that in? Should be close, yeah. Let's get rid of this eyesore. I can now take down my temporary supports. I properly have my ceiling joists supported with my new beam. Unbelievably, this is the old support. This right here is what our, their so-called beam was attached to, holding up the rafters. That's a lot of weight to toenail with two screws into this so-called header. And that's how easily they come out. We're putting the vapor barrier around the insulated pot lights. It's just to protect from heat escaping into the attic. So you two, I might as well keep you on mudding all day. By the time you guys are done meshing this, I'll have drywall up, you guys just keep going. We can hopefully get two coats on this. We'll nail this sucker today. All yours, bud. Very nice. mold and mildew resistant, so it's great in the basements. If it's a little bit damp, uh, if you get a little bit of water leakage or anything like that, it's not gonna wreck the whole thing. It'll give you that bit of time to dry it up, clean it up, and uh, not worry about mold starting to grow, because mold starts to grow pretty quick. Basically rewired the house, so uh, this panel here won't accommodate uh, all the wiring, and then there won't be any spares left if we had leave, left this particular panel. This is a 24 circuit. The new one's going to be a 30. Everything's up to date, up to code, and the way that the uh, power will be distributed through the breakers will be right up to code as well. Now, there was a lot of problems in this attic, a lot. First of all, we had to suck out all the old insulation. It had some moisture in it, it was breaking down. It was basically not doing its job anymore. So our goal here is to achieve an R50. So what we've done is we've added spray foam. We've done a one inch butter coat throughout the whole thing, giving it a vapor barrier and an insulation value, tying in any gaps, and then adding another layer of blown in insulation and bringing it up to an R50. They're gonna save on their heating costs. And it's the way I would do my house. We 
this drywall has just been sanded. So you want to get all the dust off if you can. It's just one more layer of stuff in between the wall and the primer that's not going to help with the adhesion of the primer. The problem with using a sponge or something wet is that you might actually take the compound off or damage it. So I just like a, a dry broom. The floor was actually in good shape before. It was actually a 3 8 oak original to the house. It could have had one more sanding. But the problem is because of the patchwork, uh, the unevenness, it wasn't feasible. This will last the lifetime of the house, whereas the other stuff may have been replaced in another five years. Well, we're dead on the money right there, man. Let's leave it there. Okay, we're sunk. All we have to do, I want a filler strip over here, okay? Get our countertop in. Cut the hole for the sink, get the sink in, Martin hooks up, we're done. Nice job. Yeah. Oh, yes. Wow. Wow. Oh my god. This is awesome. Yeah. We both realized after the first three weeks that nothing had been done properly. And that's when we, we, we started to get worried. So when he ended up contacting Mike, we knew that it would be done right. I think when you walk in, it'll feel like our home. Well, this is what I call down to the wire. The trades are finishing up. We've got the bulk of the work done. 95% is done. We're putting in lights today. We have Frank's guys here today putting in some lights, some switches. We have painters here today painting the upstairs, painting the downstairs. We have carpet today. Uh, carpet's going in the basement, right up the stairs. We have the shower glass coming in today. We have John. John is actually going to get some soil down. Just cleaning up the front yard, getting it seeded, getting it ready for spring, because spring's almost here, and it's almost time for these people to come home. Once the work is all done, I think as soon as we drive into our driveway, I'm probably going to smile just like I am now, which feels good. It's definitely going to be a relief to know that we're walking into a home that's been completely fixed and, you know, we don't have anything else to worry about. Welcome home. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Nasha, hey, how you know, my dear? Good, how are you? You're looking good. How you, how you been? Good. When's the last time I saw you? About a month ago. About a month ago. Yeah. So you've been out of the house for about a month, and I'm very sorry about that, but That's something okay. tells me you're going to be somewhat happy of what we've done here. We had uh, Steve, our roofer, replace this whole side of the roof. He's happy with the rest, new vents. Well, are you excited to see the inside? Yes. yes. Me too. Are you excited? <laughs> it's freezing out here. Of course I am. <laughs> well, let's go inside. All right. Okay. Wow. Oh, my god. Wow, well, let's just come in. Oh my god. Relax goodness. a minute. Wow. This is awesome. Yeah. So we determined once we started taking it down that all they did was cut open the wall, put in a couple of two by fours, took out structure, and your ceiling was sinking down. So that means everything in here was gutted. Now all new ceiling joists went in to span over, sister up to the other ones for structure, carrying a new beam right across from this side to this side and carrying the load of the new beams that we put in place. Oh, this is this fantastic. This is good, yeah. I love that little, that's nice. You like the wall? We call like it an it. open window. Open window, I love open it. Window. It's nice. Kind of okay. keeps it separate. Yeah. Now, with that, that obvious. Your floors. Yeah, floors, I know. Floors, I know. Because wow. once you start moving things, you can't repair the floor. It's old, it was yeah. terrible, it was squeaky. So we brought in, this is an engineered oak. I like it. Do you like it's it? Beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Talk about a house flip. Yeah. Talk about flipping me out. Because <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what it does, is it flips me out. They did a lot more than I expected. It's a good feeling to know that everything's been done and he's exceeded all of our expectations by far. So this is the redesign, including all new ductwork in your house, all new electrical, all new plumbing, wow. literally, mm -hmm. and new laundry room, new furnace room, new bathroom. So let's take a look at your laundry room. This is awesome. Your house was completely rewired by Frank. Yeah, love wow. him, because we didn't have a choice. New panel, completely new wired, and passed by ESA Electrical Safety Authority. Fantastic. Uh, but before all this, we actually pulled up all the concrete floor in your basement. All new plumbing, 
So then spray foam throughout the whole basement after doing all the electrical and plumbing and then nothing but mold resistant drywall. Fantastic. <laughs> you ready to see more? Yes. Huh? <laughs> so, so actually it's still really big. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, all new trim, all new everything, and it's still nice and yeah, roomy, isn't still it? Still nice and yes. open. So the yeah. idea was to take yeah. that center area, do your laundry room, uh, do your bathroom. And if you notice, we try not to do too many boxes. The only bulks we have here, bulkheads, is where your beams were. Yeah. And that's, we took advantage for all the runs of the ductwork. No kitchen, okay. because I'm not turning it into a, a, a legal apartment. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to break the, the code laws here. Right. I really want to show your bathroom. <laughs> I really want to see <laughs> Should we, bathroom. let's see, should we go? <laughs> Furnace room? And then bathroom? The furnace room is a good idea. Let's go to the furnace room. All right. I'm going to hold off on the bathroom. Come on. Now let's take a look at your brand new mechanical room. So again, all new plumbing, proper drainage. Look at your gas line. This is, like, talk about an assembly. This is, Gary is just an yeah. incredible guy. Not to mention Martin, all the new piping we've put in place. Well, this is good. This is good. It's nice and no, organized. No, it's and... I don't think we'll sell this house ever. <laughs> That's good to hear. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to show you your bathroom. You ready? Okay. Yes. Okay. Remember, it's just a little little toilet and sink, right? Okay. That's all it is. But you might want to sell your upstairs bathroom. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, my god. <gasps> and this one actually works, by the way. <laughs> wow. You can come take showers down here. Oh, oh wow, that's, that's nice. nice tile. Yeah, that's really nice tiles. Nice and simple, but it looks really good, eh? Yes, it looks fantastic. You even got a low flush toilet. This yeah. is really that efficient is. toilet. This is what guys will really love, though. <laughs> oh, that's oh, cool. Huh? It doesn't slam it shut. It doesn't slam. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Yeah, right? this is really beautiful. So how much do you think this would have cost you to do? Mm -hmm. Probably about oh, well over 100 grand. You're very good at that. It's about $150,000 worth yeah. of work. Wow. I'm happy. The guys did a great job, and uh, you can come move home. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We don't, we <laughs> honestly, I don't know how to thank you guys. Well, you this has been did. a lot of work, a lot. Yeah. We really do appreciate it. <laughs> well, I want to give you guys a hug, but he's just too tall. Oh, I don't think my, my arms are There we go. Like, there See, I can go. get down there. <laughs> no thank worries. Thank you so much. Thank no, you so much, so Mike. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank I feel fantastic you. about Me. all the changes that they've made. You know, I think uh, now for at least the next 20 to 30 years, we won't have anything to worry about in this house. So I'm really excited. So you learned something. Yeah, of course we do. The next time you yeah. buy a house, yeah. do the inspection. Uh, hi! How are you doing on your kid's visit? <laughs> now this is the life, guys. We can watch everyone work. I'm almost done, MJ. Good job, guys. Thank you so much, Amazing guys, job, for guys. everything that you've done, Thank all you. the hard work. Thank you.